Hey Brahmas, in this video, we will showcase a database called Academic Search Complete, which happens to be the very first one in our list of databases for our history guide. So if you click on this link, you should open up the EBSCO database, and I'm sure you have seen or used an EBSCO host database before. But before we start entering our keywords, let's think about our topic. I'm pretending that I'm working on a paper about the Trail of Tears in American history and the Indian Removal Act of 1930. So I think that those two concepts, Trail of Tears and the Indian Removal Act, summarize the basics of my topic. Now, one technique that every college student should know is the quotation marks. If you put the quotation marks around keywords, you're basically telling the search engine to look for that exact string of characters together as one word. So if you want a phrase or a number of keywords together as an item, it's more effective if you put them in quotation marks because then the database knows that you want that exact phrase. Now, before I click search, notice that I did not bother to play with the settings underneath the search bar. And that is because it is more effective to think about the keywords that represent your topic and to play with variations of your keywords until you figure out the best combination that pulls up the research exactly on your topic. But for now, let's begin here and we can always come back and play with different variations of my topic. Now with this database, we have 231 results. And the first thing to notice is the type of source. This first one is a periodical, which means that the publication that published this article, in this case called New American, is probably a magazine or a newspaper. The second result is coming from an academic journal. And this academic journal is titled Historian. So this is probably a peer-reviewed article because scholarly journals are usually peer-reviewed. And this type of source is of the highest quality in academia and in the research process. So we value these articles quite a bit. If you scroll a bit down on the left-hand side, there is a section for source types. So in this database, you can see the different types of sources that it contains. Academic Search Complete will have academic journals more than anything. Now let's look at one of our results. Item four has a title here and it's coming from the Journal of Supreme Court History. So that gives you an idea of what the article is going to be about. It's always useful to take a look at the record of the article. So you can do that quickly here as a preview. And this can be useful because usually the abstract summarizes the arguments of the article. I personally like to go into the record by clicking on the title. And I like to look at the record before I open the actual full text of the article. One of the things that I like about the record is the section on subject terms, because in this area, you can discover new keywords or concepts that you hadn't thought about before in relation to your topic. And maybe your research question will evolve as you learned different contexts of your topic. At this point, I could pick up the keyword indigenous peoples of the Americas, or maybe I can consider if I'm more interested in constitutional law, or maybe I don't know what sovereignty is and I want to look it up so that I can be more equipped to deal with this article. Now, another useful part of the record of the article is the functions on the right hand side. Over here, you can click on the email button to email yourself this article. By default, our databases already have the MLA citation as the main one, but you can change it if you wish. 
and the PDF should be already selected as an option if the PDF exists for that article. So you simply just have to put a working email address and click send. And this database will send you the PDF of the article, if it exists, the citation in MLA for that article, and also a link to come back to this database. Another useful thing is the side button right here. Sometimes you just want the citation quickly, so you can easily pull them up here. Our database has many different citation styles, such as APA, but if we are sticking for MLA for our history classes, we're gonna scroll down a bit, and this would be a working citation for this article. But we must point out that these citations are not always 100% correct, so it's always encouraged to double check these citations, but at least you have something to start with. Now that I have finally opened the full text of the article, I can see its PDF, and up on the top, I can see that it's 27 pages long. Sometimes academic articles can range from 10 to 60 pages. So that's why it's important to make sure that the article will actually help you in your thesis and research question, because ultimately you're the one who's going to be reading these. Now, this article seems to be about Thomas Jefferson. And if I start reading the first two paragraphs, the second one ends with, this article will outline Jefferson's views on Indian citizenship before turning to a study of how Jefferson's administration set the stage for the Cherokee removal cases. So right from the first page, I already have an idea of the thesis of this author. And as I start scrolling through the paper and looking at the headings, you're going to encounter primary sources such as this cartoon and you're especially going to encounter primary sources that are historical documents such as letters or other government documents. Now this is important to realize because within this academic article which is a secondary source you are encountering a lot of primary sources. Now, let's say that I was only interested in looking at the sections where they specifically mention the Removal Act of 1830. So I could do a command of Control F to search the text of the article for a specific keyword. And I can try 1830 because I believe that if I look for 1830, I will find the sentences that mention the Indian Removal Act. And so this is a technique that you can use to look for specific keywords to make sure that that article actually talks about the concepts that you want to learn about. I'm going to click on result list on the top left hand corner to go back to my original page of results. And I want to show you how to add more databases onto Academic Search Complete. So since EBSCOhost is a company that produces many databases, if you click on Choose Databases, you can actually search multiple databases at the same time, considering that all of these are EBSCO databases. So for U.S. history, the ones that should help you would be the first one, America, History and Life. Now, the ebook collection is actually a really great database that we have. And then, of course, we're going to click on History Reference and up here, History Reference Center. So those four databases should help you in case you were not finding a lot of good results on your topic. So after I clicked OK, now I came back to the EBSCO interface, but I'm searching all of these databases at the same time in addition to Academic Search Complete, so I should get a higher number of results. 
but because I also clicked on two databases of ebooks, you will start seeing some book icons that are actually either ebooks or articles from ebooks.